the electrodynamics mod is really quite complex and realistic in how they deal with energy. The first thing we want to look at really quickly is the ores section. There's a whole new load of ores. What I would recommend is making the EEC first edition. This is a book and a copper wire, which is just two copper ingots on top of each other. And then in the guidebook is the ores section, and it just shows you all the different ores. So if you are looking for a specific ore, it shows you the Y level, etc., that they spawn at at that level. A few other things that we need to know about are the metric prefixes. Basically, this is just the grading of things. Um, sometimes you will see electricity, etc., and things like that shown like uh, milli, micro, nano, and pico. Milli is a one thousandth, micro is a millionth, nano is a billionth, and pico is a trillionth. The same as kilo. If you're European, you'll be like, yep, I know what a kilo is, but I'm not sure about other areas of the world that are using different systems. Kilo is a thousand, mega is a million, giga is a billion, tera is a trillion. And you will see these used throughout the mod. There's also a few different um, things we need to learn about in how we transfer and use power. I'm going to try and do it as simply as possible. If it sounds overwhelming, don't worry, we're going to be going through this together. Jewels are the main way of powering your machines. It doesn't really use forge energy. It does use jewels. And the energy needs to be flowing. So the speed of the flow is measured in volts. So the way we look at volts is the voltage of our machines. Voltages are at different levels. Now, most oftentimes in the electrodynamics mod, you'll know what voltage a machine is by its color. So we have yellow, blue, red, purple, and white. And you can actually see on the machines, you can see the voltage of the machines. The electric furnace, if I click on it, you can see is 120 volts. This is another way that you can see what voltage a machine is. The blue is 240, red is 480, purple is 960, and white is 1920. Now, if I also put in electrodynamics into JEI and hover over these, you can see oftentimes it shows you what voltage the machine is in JEI as well. Now, your electricity needs to be flowing um, at all times, more on that later, and also the amount of power that you're actually transferring every second is known as power. It, it, it's more simple than it, it sounds when we get into the mod. But over here, you can see the usage. It's using 3.5 kilowatts, so 3,500 watts, and then the voltage it can use is 120. If you give something too low of a voltage, it will still draw power, but won't actually run. So that electricity will be flowing, but it's not going to keep the machine running. If you give it too high of a voltage, the machine will explode in Armageddon. In terms of inputting and outputting your electricity into machines, let's take this electric furnace, for example. The red slot, and this is a universal in all electrodynamics machines, red means input, gray means output. So this is a thermoelectric generator. It makes power, and therefore you can see this gray output here, whereas on the electric furnace, you input the power at the back here. And that's going to be the same on all machines in the electrodynamics mod. So red for input, gray is outputting electricity. Before we get into the video, thank you so much to G-Portal for sponsoring this video. You can get Minecraft or a plethora of other games on their library here through their game cloud system, meaning you can buy as much RAM as you need for, say, a Minecraft server. And if you've got any left over or you want to add more, you can add other servers from different games into your game cloud and switch them out throughout the month as you wish. They have servers all over the world, as you can see here and give you protection from DDoS attacks, 24-7 support, databases, and the server is immediately online. If you're looking for a specific mod pack in Minecraft, you can simply search it up, like our Patreon server, which we host on RLCraft. You can see it also recommends how much gigabytes you need. I, as a content creator of a community, need to make sure that it's a company I can trust, and my server runs beautifully, better than even running it myself, and I have a lot of experience in running servers. So if you want 10% off your first order with G Portal, check out the link in my description. And don't forget, you can always join the Patreon to support the channel and also join the Patreon-only RLCraft server. So now we know how electricity works. How do we move that electricity around? Well, it's with wires. There's a few different things we need to know about wires, but don't worry, I think it's fairly quite straightforward. 
You can make your wires in a variety of different metals. For example, tin, iron, copper, silver, gold, superconductive, and that's it. To make these, we're going to be doing it in a wire mill, and you can pretty much make all of them from the start. I'm going to be using copper wire as an example. So the types of wires we have are, you know, copper wire, as you can see, and then we have insulated copper wire, and that will connect to uninsulated. For your insulation, there's two different types. There is woolen insulation, just known in the mod as insulation. You can use this with polyethylene sheets, which obviously is not something we'll be using quite yet, rabbit hide, leather, and also wool. Uh, if you do use leather or buffalo or anything like that, you know, depending on what mod you've got installed, anything that has the leather tag, um, you can get six, whereas one wool makes one insulation. There is also ceramic insulation as well. Made from ceramic plates, which is made from ceramic, which is cooked up from wet ceramic, which is easy made from vanilla materials. Number one, uninsulated wires can shock you. It may kill you. Watch out, it is electric. You can mitigate some of the damage with some electrodynamics rubber boots, just made with some insulation. It may not protect you from all of the damage, however, and it will take durability whenever it's harmed by the electricity. The woolen insulation is obviously very cheap, um, whereas the ceramic is going to be a bit more expensive. However, the ceramic ones, which look like this, this is all copper wire, these are fireproof, which you might think, oh, amazing. However, there are some drawbacks to that. If we look at the different wires we have here for copper, you can see that there is a resistance and an ampacity and then an, uh, an insulation rating. So we're going to go over those in a second. Main one I want to talk about at the moment is the insulation rating. You can see here on insulated copper wire black, it's 240 volts. This is the highest voltage that this cable can take. If you do put in a higher one, and you're like, oh no, oh my goodness, you have 20 ticks of Minecraft time before the cable burns up. Okay, so you will have a very quick bit of time to correct your mistake. You'll see here that the ceramic copper wire, however, has an insulation rating of 480 volts because it is super duper insulated. There is also a logistical copper wire, which when it has power running through it, will emit a redstone signal. And then there is also a whoopsie, I forgot to include it, thick copper wire, which is basically made with um, free insulated copper wires and then free more insulation will give you two thick, which is obviously quite expensive, but that has an insulation rating of up to 960 volts and therefore much higher voltage. Now let's talk about the resistance and the ampacity. So the resistance is the, it's not an exact, well, it is an exact science, but I'm going to make it for dummies, if you will. Sorry, mod dev, if you're watching this. But the resistance, the higher the resistance, the more resistant this wire is to electricity running through it. So it hates electricity if it has a much higher resistance. And that is how much you're going to lose. And I'm not saying you're going to lose 20.06 per block, but the higher the resistance, the more you will lose per block. And because it is not linear, it is squared, it means that over long distances, you can be really losing a lot of power before it even gets to your machine. So just be wary of that. And that's going to depend on what metal you want to use. So if we look at the tin wire, it has a resistance of 20. So it is quite resistant to electricity. If we look at the um, iron wire, it has 17. Copper is free. Silver is 2.79, gold is 4, um, and then we have insulated superconductive wire, which has a resistance of 0, 0.0. So I do believe this means that you won't be losing any power. Now, if you want to go straight in um, at insulated superconductive, to make this wire, you do need to use in a wire mill superconductive ingots, which is made from a superconductive blend, which is made from silver dust, Ender eye dust, which is made in a mineral grinder, um, and some gold dust. So it's not like the hardest thing to get. It's not like some super duper complex um, blend, but obviously it's a lot more complex to get than just boring old iron or copper. So make your choice wisely, I say. The last one is ampacity. It describes how high of a current the wire can experience before it fails. If the current in a wire exceeds the ampacity, the wire runs the risk of permanent damage or destruction. And I may have actually misspoken earlier because it is 
the ampacity here that it can take over it for 20 ticks um, rather than the... I can't remember what the other one I said was. But yeah, just be um, aware of that. So basically, um, if we look at the sort of wires versus each other, you can see here on TIN, um, it can have 60 amps running through it, has a really high resistance and doesn't have a great voltage. Whereas copper has a really low resistance, a higher ampacity, so it can be having 360 amps running through it at a voltage of 240, and it's got a low resistance, so you're not going to lose as much um, per block distance. Silver is even better at 600 amps. Um, and then insulated gold is 1,000 at only 4 resistance, which is really good. And then the insulated superconductive wires actually have infinite ampacity, meaning they can take any kind of power running through it. So I think the easiest way to explain this is um, voltage, you know, is like certain machine, machines run at certain voltages, so tiers of electricity. Imagine a transformer that you see um, outside, right? The big, huge ones. Imagine that the local transformer going into your house um, is going to be, you know, or the plug sockets are at 240 voltage. But we can use kilowatts and kilowatts of energy. Kilowatts and kilowatts and kilowatts of energy we're using all day long would be the um, kind of ampacity in this situation, um, whereas the voltage is the actual, you know, the plug sockets versus obviously we couldn't plug our hairdryer into a transformer out in the street. It would explode because the voltage is so high, um, even though we may be using a lot of like current, if you will, through those transformers. Hopefully that's the easiest way I'm explaining it. It is obviously quite a complex thing. Um, but if you can, insulated superconductive would be the best. You can dye them as well, whatever color. So obviously they won't connect to each other when they're dyed. Ceramic um, generally have a bit of a um, higher insulation rating. Uh, for the superconductive, it's 240. For ceramic, it's 480 volts. And then we also have um, the thick versions, which are at 960 volts, those being the best. So that is how um, wires work here. If you want to take off the insulation and change it in the field, you can. Just simply get a pair of shears and, or well, maybe not on the ceramic, but on these ones, if you want to upgrade them, you can just right click and take off the insulation um, as well. It doesn't seem to work on the ceramic, my apologies. So obviously we're working with a lot of wattages and we're working with a lot of voltages, etc. So let's look at the tools we have available to make things simple for us, because this is what we need right now. So I'm using electric furnaces as an example, just powered by some thermodynamic, sorry, thermoelectric generators. Very simply, if you want to see what is actually going on in my example, I'm using lava to make energy in a thermoelectric generator. Powering it, uh, the, these caught fire because they're not ceramic, but that's fine. Um, going into an electric furnace. Now remember, yellow is 120 voltage. So we can see up here it's using 3.5 kilowatts. The voltage is 120 and it's at 100% satisfaction, meaning it's happy and it's getting the wattage it needs. And it's using that to smelt up my ores. What I'm then doing, remember out of the red bit, because um, that's technically the input, well, before it goes into here, I'm actually having another wire go into a upgrade transformer. And that's going to upgrade it to the next one, which is 240 volts. So it goes into, obviously, the red slot in the transformer and comes out the gray slot and then goes into the double electric furnace. And that uses seven kilowatts, so a lot more than the other one. It has the right voltage because we've used the transformer upgrade, but it's struggling and it's not getting enough satisfaction because I'm not making seven kilowatts of power. Then we can upgrade again to the next one, um, and this one would be struggling even more because, as you can see, it uses 10 kilowatts, but the voltage itself is absolutely fine. There is also downgrade transformers, um, which do the opposite. It can get really, really complex. There's also a Mark II transformer. Uh, it's called Turns, and there's a formula that goes with it. Honestly, I would just use the basic ones for now um, to keep things simple and not overcomplicate this, especially as this is only at the start of the guide. There are multimeter um, blocks and also handheld versions, which we're going to be using to look at the different currents, etc. So when I use this on my wires here, you can see it shows up a lot of different information. We can see the amps, 
So it's 31.5 amps, how much the um, amperage can take in the wire, which is unlimited. It's at 120 volts. So there's 120 volts going through here. And it's pushing out 3.78 kilowatts. Whereas if I go to this bit after the transformer, you can see it's at 240 volts. Um, but we're only getting 1.87 kilowatts through. And you know that we need seven. Here, we're at uh, 480 voltage, but we're only getting about 1,000 wattage, and we need 10,000. This is a really amazing tool to diagnose problems in your electricity. And I'm aware that you don't know how to use steel and stuff yet. If you're watching this as part of the ultimate or beginner guide, um, it will obviously be covered after we get through the basics. And if not, then watch those guides. We have a relay machine, which will stop the flow of electricity going through it with a redstone signal, and also a circuit breaker. The circuit breaker is really interesting. Um, if it detects that a voltage coming through or amperage, etc., is too high and the machines will explode, it will cut it off, just like um, the fuses in your house, you could say. Uh, there's a current regulator, which you know basically regulates the current, and also a circuit monitor, which I'm not going to go over right now because it's incredibly complex, um, but it is covered in the guidebook. Regarding forge energy units, if you're thinking, can I use this with other mods, there's, the answer is yes and no. So obviously this mod runs off joules. You can actually use forge energy. However, it doesn't mean that electrodynamics cannot interact with forge energy. Sorry, it uses joules. It doesn't use forge energy, but it doesn't mean it can't interact with them. So basically, it assumes that all forge energy machines are 120 volts, which is the lowest, meaning if you power, say, a pulverizer from thermal expansion with a 240 volt power source, it will explode. The way around that is just to use downgrading transformers, um, downgrade transformers to make it all go down to 120 voltage, and then that will work with any of your machines that are forge energy. Battery boxes from this mod, Electrodynamics, are also able to accept forge energy. But keep in mind, if the output voltage is not 120 volts, the FE device will again explode. And now you are pretty much ready to um, get further into the mod because you know all about electricity. If you want me to sum it up into a TLDR, basically um, we have the usage, which is actually the amount of energy being produced. For example, these thermoelectric generators are producing 540 watts at a base voltage of 120. I here am using 3.5 kilowatts, so I'd need like seven, I think it is, um, thermoelectric generators to power this. But it doesn't matter that I've got 10 of them, the voltage isn't going to go any higher than 120. It's all at the same voltage. Whereas here, it's at 240. Red is where you're inputting energy. Gray is where you're outputting energy. We can see here, for example, on the machines, oops, there is a gray output port um, for the energy to come out of. Don't forget ceramic wires uh, cannot catch fire. You've got all different wires depending on their um, conductability, etc. Resistance, higher resistance is more um, energy loss. And there are tiers of your energy, yellow, blue, red, purple and then white going up in um, voltage tiers as we go up and I think that's pretty much it I hope you did enjoy the video click that subscribe button if you did and of course leave a thumbs up if you're looking for other mod guides I do a hell of a lot on this channel my actual goal on this channel is to complete every major mod in the entirety of Minecraft for forge fabric etc if you look at my channel I have a tech mod shelf a magic mod shelf a utility and standalone mod shelf, so ones that aren't in playlists. I also have now mod pack guides as a shelf. So at the moment, I am live streaming through RL Craft, and you can get that, of course, on my lives. I, sh I live every Wednesday and Saturday, and you can always see when the next scheduled stream is. And I play through the mod pack, and then I will also do separate guides on that mod pack. So if you are looking for specific mod packs, or you just want to come along and ask me some questions or hang out, you can also do that there. Do also just use the search bar uh, if you are looking for a specific mod. And if you'd like to play with me, the mod pack that I do live stream, I do from our Patreon server, which of course you can join down below, which would massively support the channel, but also gets you access to things like that.